so excited to meet you. Well, I'm excited to meet you. I feel like I know you because I've read both of your books. I love your Christmas book. And uh, yeah, so I'm honored to be here with you. Well, I got to say, okay, let me introduce you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. We have Paul Shear on the show. Paul's got a new book called uh, Joyful Recollections of Trauma. I have an advanced copy, so it's in, in black and white, but the full color version is out May 21st. Uh, I got a chance to read the first few chapters of it. I haven't finished the whole thing, but I, and I'm not just bullshitting you because you're on the show. I loved it. it. Like it, I kept wanting to read it. I thought it was oh. so good. I love this style of books. And I guess, you, you know, you said you read my books and I, I just like kind of, I like a memoir that's not a memoir, you know, like yes. it's like I, slice I, of life type stories. I'll tell you, you know, I read your book as I was writing my book and I responded the same exact way. I, I love both of your books. I was telling you before we started Thanks, recording, um, the Christmas one holds a very special place for me. And the fact that I just, I love it. Uh, but yeah, I feel like, you know, I didn't have enough of a life to give you the Barbara Streisand treatment. I mean, I love that Barbara Streisand sure. book, but like, I wanted to kind of do something that kind of encompasses a bunch of different things and also leaves the door open for more, it's this is about like a a chapter, a slice that kind of coalesces into a bigger theme. But yeah, it's um, I, I that is the the nicest thing I could have possibly heard. So thank well, you. Well, and there's there's stuff, uh, you know, I think so many experiences are so relatable, even if somebody didn't go through the experience. So there's yeah. something uh, like a a fire that you caused as a child, and it's like yes. I didn't start a fire as a child. But it's <laughs> like I so related to it, and I felt like I was there, and I just. I really loved it. So I know we're going to get into that in a little bit. Before we get into more of yes. stuff, I do want to just ask, are you following any sort of reality TV stuff right now? Are you waiting in any of those waters at oh, the moment? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I'm a big Summer House fan. I don't know if you like Summer House. I feel I like I'm on the fringe of Bravo with liking Summer House, but I am <laughs> all in. Okay. So what do you think of uh, the dynamics between Lindsay and Carl? I, do you have a side on the Lindsay and Carl dynamic? I do. And I... I Look, I understand that these are people, and I always want to be respectful of the fact that they are not characters, they are human beings, but I have to say, Carl has to get out of that relationship. I mean, it is not good. She cannot handle being with a sober person. I feel like she's doing him a disservice. Yeah, but okay. But don't you think Carl also needs to get a bit of a backbone too? Because I feel like Carl, I mean, the the work situation really bugged me with Carl where he was throwing right. $20,000 away to the career coach. I mean, like, what the that fuck was seems that? wild. I mean, I also have questions about, uh, and again, I'm sorry, someone, I forget names, but uh, the lover, Kyle, yeah. uh, oh, Kyle, they have a therapist that comes to their house and sits on their couch. I mean, where, what kind of money? Are these? I've I've been to a lot of therapy sessions. I've never had a, <laughs> uh, a, a a therapist that comes to my house. Right. But yes, right. twenty thousand dollar career coach, and I mean, it made me a little sad when it was like we wanted to, you want to do a podcast. We got your podcast equipment. <laughs> like he couldn't even do a podcast. Right. I mean. Right. And even, I mean, not to get us too in the weeds, but there was one scene, I feel like a few weeks back or something, where he's talking about influencer money, and yeah, he's, he was saying he made seventy k. And she made 120 or something like he, she, obviously women in the influencer field tend to make a little bit more. Sure. But I was still thinking like the, the Bravo celebrities at BravoCon can make 70,000 from one of the brand deals with, uh, you know, one of the bigger brands there. So to me, that was shocking as well. Well, but what do you think? I mean, and let's just, you know, we're getting into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this world, <laughs> They're not the they're not the below deck. They're not the valley. They're not the housewives. They are not going to get a plus brand deals. It's sure. just not going to happen. I mean, do you have any dirt on why Hannah's not on the show? Hannah Burner. Hannah yeah. Burner. I kind of think they should bring Hannah back. Like I don't. I think towards the end of Hannah's run, she yeah. was losing the plot a little bit. Like I felt like she was leading too far into what she thought the audience might have wanted. Yeah, um, I get that too. But, but I do, I, I kind of agree. I kind of feel like maybe that it's time to bring Hannah back a little bit. Well, because right now the, the show is, and again, I'm loving it. I'm watching it. It just feels like we're in that weird phase of life. And maybe this is a perfect for Bravo where you're not in your twenties. It's not so cute to look as drunk as you are. And yet we haven't really, are we doing something? I don't know. It seems like everyone is 
it just, I feel like we're catching them at a weird middle time. And, and, and there are moments that I feel uncomfortable. I'm like, I don't know if I should be watching this anymore. It just seems yeah. it, they're too immature. They're too old to be as immature as they are acting. I know the drinking makes me feel icky because I'm around the same age as uh, the cast members. Yeah. And sometimes when I see it, it just feels like they're doing it so, even for the show, which is kind of gross. Because I don't know that they'd be acting like yeah. that in re- I, real life. I know. And it's like, and, and thank God for, for Kyle, because Kyle just gets drunk and just has some real heart to hearts. And I guess that maybe is the best part of the show is like, I can't wait for him to look so sloppy and just be like, why aren't you guys having sex? What's going on? I mean, although it was such an insult. <laughs> that's what it that sounds he... exactly like to him, too. I know it's a very subtle impression, but that was him. <laughs> His eyes, the eyes are what, like, they're so, they're, they're intense, you know. Um, but I don't know why the partying and the, the drinking or the lifestyle of the Valley doesn't feel as weird <laughs> as the ones on uh, uh, on Summer House. I don't know. I don't know if that's an L.A. thing. I don't, because like, they're they're in the same stages of their lives. But there's something different. I can't quite put my finger on it. You know, I don't know if you dive too far into the housewives, but sometimes I get really like kind of fucked up in the head when I think about some of the housewives and their ages versus like the summer house. And, you know, because I I was rewatching an old season of Orange County and Megan King Edmonds said she was 30. And I was like 30 years old. Like, wait a minute. I didn't realize that. When I saw that, I fell out of my goddamn chair. <laughs> like that's the thing about the housewives. Like I am, I am like believing they are so much older. And when you, when they whip out their ages, I'm like, oh. stop. Whoa. What is, I don't know what it is. I mean, again, I'm not, I just think that like the way that they carry themselves from me, they, they've aged quicker or they, and they're beautiful women. I just, I was surprised. I was shocked at 30. And are yeah. they lying about 30? Who knows? I don't trust anyone ages because I do know on, on a lot of these shows, they lie about their age. I I previously yeah. say, said Tom Sandoval has been lying about his age. You know, he's like, a, <laughs> everyone's a year, little year or two off. And I think in general, celebrities, if you Google their age, they're probably a year or two older. Right. It, it sucks because I got in this business before you could, like, you were like excited to get information about you online. So you put your natural age in there. And then once it's in there, it's locked. You know, You're these fucked. reality stars could be a little <laughs> bit more shady. Um, do you mess around at all with like the competitive reality shows? Are you at all a survivor or, or a, um, uh, traders person? You know, I love traders, love Loved traders. traders. I can't wait for the new season to me. That was like the more recent season was one of the best reality seasons I've seen. I just thought, well, now are you best. watching foreign traders as well? My boyfriend does. He loves it. He watches it. Maybe Australia or something. Danny, one I, I need you. I need I, if I can impart one thing to you okay. at the end of this. It is, it's on Peacock. It's not even hard to find. You must get yourself to season two, Australia Traders. Okay. It is. I'm literally writing that down. It is truly the best reality show I've ever seen on TV because it's got all the elements that we love of Traders, and I really like season two of the American Traders. Uh, I thought that was really well done, but. There's something different about Australia because Australia, it's like, here's a guy who's like, I'm a locksmith and I need this money, right? They're not So on there's there. no celebrities. Like the celebrities are like, they're mine. I mean, and like, not to, again, I want to be respectful, but they're Australian celebrities, if anything, right? Uh, they're not, they're not, they're not even like, they're in a house and people are like, oh, I think I know you. Like it's not Hugh Jackman. No, no. Okay. I mean, by the way, I would love to see a Hugh Jackman reality show. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman just <laughs> accusing each other of killing each other. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I think I mean I like I like that the that Peacock has figured it out so much so they're ripping off Bravo in an aggressive way so much so that Andy is hosting the reunion shows of it like they don't even put Alan coming there like no Alan you can't handle this but it does create this interesting dissonance between the cast because you have some survivor people or the from the challenge which is just like road rules uh and then you have but then you have like um uh oh what's her name the lawyer from uh, atlanta uh yeah phaedra who 
clearly didn't understand that she was on a game. Like she's like, they lied to me. And I like, she's like, no, I'm like, Phaedra, that's the game, Phaedra. They're, they're supposed to lie. <laughs> like, it's funny that they have housewives rules and, 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 they're and challenge a, rules. Yeah, yeah. And they have challenge rules. I love it. Well, and uh, that was, I love that too. Like, cause I, I watch the challenge. I still will dip in yes. and out. I don't regularly watch it, but I still dip in and out. And Trishel and CT, they just have been through so many years of the challenge. Like they have no emotional investment in the traders. None. So they didn't they are, feel any, anything lying to those people they didn't give a fuck about mj's feelings they're like i'm here for the cash and the way that they did her dirty was beautiful like it's like that's what i want i want Mm -hmm. that it's like Mm -hmm. you want people on these shows in a way to have no soul have soul in real life but it's a game show you're get that money and i have to tell you how far trishel has come i mean when i watched her on real world las vegas i mean that's a show. Like the like yeah. there is something about early reality uh, that you will never get back. Like that pure, innocent, they didn't know what they were in store for. Right. I just was rewatching Netflix puts on like old seasons of Real World. Oh. And I was watching the one with Wes. I think it was Austin. Was it Austin? Yeah, it was okay, Austin. Yeah, yeah. They, their like job is to do something with South by Southwest, which was oh, yes, in its yes, early yes. phases of I visited that Southwest. house just to see it because it's like a cool house near everything. Oh, uh, but I'm rewatching it. It's just like there's things that happen on there that you could never see happening. I mean, I, sometimes I'm watching like Vanderpump Rules and it feels dark or heavy. And then yeah. if you watch some old scenes like that, sometimes the things that happen on there are fucking nuts and horrible. Oh, and it's Ruthie yeah. getting slapped. I mean, the like like Ruthie getting slapped in that car was. A shocking Wait, was, moment. Was was Ruthie? Hawaii? Oh, Ruthie was Hawaii, oh, right? No, or, yeah, Ruthie was Hawaii, and she was the drunk. Uh, <laughs> the girl with the Lyme disease uh, was the one who got slapped in. Was it Austin or Seattle? I, this is where it all blends. This is like this is where my head is uh, always like. I'm like I watch all these shows. And right, then, they all run together. And I always say to June, like I'm like when uh, my wife June, uh, I'm like I'll describe what they look like because I. It's just one piece of information I can't keep in my head anymore. I'm like, I will watch these shows. I will keep your plot lines in. But when it comes to names like that and on Game of Thrones and Walking Dead, I'm like, nah, names be damned. I know you by, (laughs) I'm judging, I'm not even judging a book by a cover. I'm just describing a book by its cover. Right. Even when um, there's like a new Housewives franchise or something, I always want them to wear T-shirts like they do on the challenge with their names on it. Because I can't, it takes me a season to learn a Housewives name. Like and you they don't know how long they're going to be there for. Right. Um, I mean, again, I'm going to do it to you again. But in Beverly Hills, I was shocked, but actually very happy that uh, that the woman who was married to the guy who made Lion King, see, there's all my details, uh, that she left. I, I felt like she was too pure to be on that show. She yeah. couldn't, couldn't handle it with those. I, I think she's a lovely person. I met her recently and she was equally lovely, but I was like, we yeah, need, she, we need, yeah, exactly. We Some of these people are not equipped for reality TV, nor they should be. And that's that we should celebrate the people who aren't because they're staying, they're saying stable people. Yes. That's why they're not good on reality TV. Now, can I ask you, and again, I'm, I'm, I, I really feel like I'm brain farting all over today. No, I love what it. do you think about in New York? Could we bring in, um, oh, the girl from Uncut Gems that Kanye dated. Uh, she just wrote a book. Julia, Julia, what yeah. is it? What? No, Julia. Yes, it, it's. It Julia, is Julia, yes. right? Yes, it's Julia, but I can't think of her last name. Yeah, it's not Julia another, Garner. Julia That's friend. from Ozark. Um, yeah. But like, uh, you know anyway, what I'm yes, talking about. Yes, yeah. yes. Julia and Fox. She, Julia Fox, yes. Thank you. And yes, I do think she would be fantastic on there. I don't know why they haven't or if they maybe approached and she wasn't. She's got this new show on E2 that debuted like, oh, yeah, it's a literally last show, night, right? like the fashion oh, okay. show. Um, and so she's in that sort of NBC Universal family. It would make sense to me. I would but love to see her on that I show. I thought I that's, love. I thought, did you think it was snoozy? I thought the first season was snoozy, like the reboot season. Oh yeah. I like, look, it's the same thing that I kind of feel about, like you need to invest time in on these shows. Like, it's like, it doesn't get good. Like, you know, again, we're in what season eight of summer house and it's like, and we're still kind of dealing with some of the same plots, but you're more invested. And I, and I felt like that too. It's like, it's hard to kind of ramp it up because I do think that people are trying to create something. But again, I'm not attached to the characters. I need to get, like Vanderpump mm-hmm. took, what was it, 12 seasons to get, like now it's like uh, they're a part of my life. But yeah, I, I didn't I didn't connect that hard to it. And it's like the surface, as time goes on, it's like that surface keeps cracking more and more. And we saw that with like Luann Deliceps from yes. Roni. It like took seasons for those cracks to start forming. And then when it, it kind of cracks all the way open, that's when the show gets really fun. Right, because I think that they would go on like you or I. In the sense of going, okay, I'm not gonna make a fool of myself. I'm not gonna drink. I'm not. Gonna, I'm. I'm going to present 
the version of me that is me. And then, you know, season one, you could probably stay on that track. Like I'm being careful. And then when it becomes like part of your daily life, that's when you get to, that's when it is. It's like the fun stuff goes on. Like that's when you get to see, like, I mean, for me, Orange County is my favorite housewives. Um, and I, 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 I jump into Jersey a little bit, uh, and I like the classic New York, but yeah, like I didn't, I didn't go as hard into New York. I kind of bop around. I feel mm-hmm. like the one show that I'm not on and tell me if I should, is that the whole below deck franchise. I, you know, way. I did, I sort of dip in I'm not a big below deck fan. I know people love it. I used to like the early season of the below deck and then I kind of fell off. Uh, I'm realizing orange County is way better than I ever really, I think gave it credit for. Cause I'm rewatching, um, season nine, 10 I've been watching before bed Ugh. and I am blown away. And I've even gotten the, another reason why I think I've realized it's so good is I've gotten my boyfriend to watch it and he doesn't really love, he doesn't watch housewives much. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, maybe do a Vanderpump Rules, but he doesn't like Housewives usually. Vanderpump and, Rules is a crossover show. Like, if you can get people in, because yeah. like, I don't know if I want to watch this. And then all of a sudden, you've watched three seasons, and you're like, "What happened to my weekend?" And I'm now addicted to these people. <laughs> <laughs> I was Wait. explaining to him the Brooks cancer scam, yeah, and, which is crazy. And I was like, "No, you just have to watch it." And it goes back to your point of like investing, because that Brooks stuff is like kind of thrown out little crumbs throughout like two or three seasons. And it's such, it's so worth the payoff because it, it's It incredible. really is. Yeah. And it's like, and there's something about like that show. I think it's, I guess what I like is Housewives and Lesser Markets. Like Orange County is perfect. It's not LA. Uh, you know, Salt Lake. Uh, yeah. Salt Lake. Great. New Jersey even. I like it. Atlanta. Amazing. I mean, it, cause there's like shit's going on there that like also is like that they, I guess like, like, not to say that it's easier to fake cancer there, but it's like, there's something where it's like, there's like a little bit of like, a, like a naivete to like what the yeah. world is like, oh, I can get away with this. Like, oh uh, no, <laughs> you can't. And I think that that's the thing. It's like, you don't want them to be too savvy. And maybe that's what yeah. we're reacting to in New York on some level. That, that cancer thing, it's, that it's was crazy. really, I was, it's again, it's like not many things make me just go like, what in the world? I mean, I'm feeling that way right now with the Jinx season two. And there's crazy stuff too, like um, little details that they pick up on, like printed cancer scan reports that have yeah. like all sorts of typos. And it's like, how did no one think that through? Even I if know. you were Brooks and you were creating these documents, wouldn't you think like- I mean, this is like a- Chris, It's like, I mean, like, and like to go through all of that, like, it's like, it's also like- there's, that's where we're talking about humanity, right? Like you're printing this stuff out. It's like, I get like being on a show and being a dick on a show, cameras are on, whatever. You're trying to play into your character so you can sell your wine. I get it. I'm all on board. But that, like, just think about like sitting there in front of the computer, printing something out. Like I had a, I had a member of my family who uh, my grandma worked in a college admissions office and he, for years, tried to bribe her to fake a diploma for him. He's like, it's not a big deal. Just fake a diploma for me. Just give me a diploma. And it's like that, like that kind of insanity, like that you would go like- And then to like, do it on camera. Oh yeah. And then do it on camera. Do do it on camera. <laughs> where, where there are things, like that's the thing that I love too. It's like, because you, you have to wait until the reunion special for when they can play it in front of them. So they have to react to it. Uh-huh. Uh, but I mean, I love it. I, lo- I I want them to just grow this franchise into just wheeling the TV into the room. Just like, oh, here yeah. it is. It's like the last dance of like Michael Jordan. It's like, here, look at this, <laughs> look at this iPad. Watch this here. iPad. <laughs> I'm out, I'm is- speaking of Michael Jordan, I am realizing that Shannon's one of the like great kind of housewives too in the rewatch. Oh, like, yes. She's so sort of unhinged from the get go and it's great TV. Uh, she's amazing and uh, and really came in hot on Traders Street because she's like, like right because she's the one Shannon wait is Shannon the wait. one that is wait no I'm confused sorry yeah yes okay no I, I, so I got I was getting confused with the my, is it Michael Jordan's son who's dating Scotty Pippen oh Larsa yes sorry who I also love yeah I do <laughs> Larsa also I mean not to bring us full circle but Larsa this previous season of Miami didn't believe one of the other cast members when she said she had cancer, she's like, well, how do you know? And the cast member's like, well, I was diagnosed. <laughs> like, that's the kind of shit that it's like, how do you, you can't write that or like, no one could no, come up with that. Like it's I know, a woman that's... denying someone else has cancer. <laughs> but like, by the way, crazy. she also has okay reason. Like in this world, 
<laughs> you're right. You're there's right. a reason to, you're right. there's a reason to think this. Right. It's not it's not unfounded. It's <laughs> not like, you won't get me again. You're not gonna it's... fool me. Laura, Laura said, just watch that Orange County house. She's yeah. like, you're not going to bamboozle me. I will not fall for it. You got to respect that. Maybe Lars is two steps ahead. Um, okay, Paul, I do want to, before uh, we get to the book, I also just want to briefly touch on your uh, one of your podcasts. How did this get made? I love it. I always kind of return to the, you have a jingle all the way episode. Um, oh, yes. With Joe Mandy. Yeah. Which I never, this is so crazy, but there's a, I watch that movie every year. It's like one of those bad movies that yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. when I see it on, I'll put it on. Anyway, um, from your podcast episode, one of you mentioned uh, that you never get to know Sinbad's kid. And I think you guys sort of joke, like, maybe Sinbad doesn't even have a kid and is just trying yeah. to get this doll. And so every time I watch it, it like, blows my mind. I'm like, wait, we don't really know. Like, that actually could just be this horrible, creepy man who's eventually ultimately going to jail after the movie ends. I mean, all I want are, like, a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern of <laughs> uh, of Jingle All the Way. I mean, let's go follow Sinbad home, you know, and and we see he's got this beautiful shrine. I'm... <sighs> I'm gonna well, my mind. well, I mean, I, I have a story that I want to tell, and I'm also like a little, I feel like it may be in poor taste. I'll tell you off air, but it, it, it is something very similar to what we just described. But I feel like I, I'm nervous that I will, it will be too dark and it will bum us both out. But, uh, okay. but I okay. did, I did, uh, I did visit someone. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna, Wait, now I'm I gonna... need to hear a little bit of it. Okay. Okay. We'll know, well, we know it's dark. You know what? I'm going to change some specifics okay. of it. Okay. okay. Change some specifics. Okay. So I uh, I was in Florida where all interesting things happen. And um, I met this family and there was a man uh, or actually met his wife and um, her husband had passed away and he was a uh, a big Hellraiser fan. And um, they, he died and they put his ashes into a Hellraiser box and they had a uh, five foot tall, uh, pinhead. I don't know if you're familiar with Hellraiser franchise. It's like a, a white face with pins standing at the mantle with the uh, the pinhead box out. And she brought me in, and she's like, "Do do you do you like pinhead?" And I was like, "As much as anyone else, I don't have. You know, I'm not strongly invested in pinhead." And uh, and uh, she goes, "Well, that that's my husband's ashes in uh, in pinhead's hands right there." And so there is a. I, I just have, just like think about like, like whatever the dark home life is. Just thinking of a house where you have a five foot tall pinhead standing with uh, a box, whatever you call that box from Hellraiser uh, with your husband's ashes in there is always been, whenever I think of like, I think you can't, I don't think it can get darker than that. That's a, that's a real, that's a real, that's real a real life there. thing. And uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was intense. I didn't know how much energy to give to pinhead. I was like, <laughs> he's a satanic <laughs> creature who makes right. people do S and M for <laughs> all eternity. I don't want to. I don't want to be put in Pinhead's hands. I love that. You know, people. I that I, takes us back to our Bravo shows because real life is darker than fiction. It um, is. It it's really the truth. Is. Are there any movies? I mean, you have covered so many movies. Are there any that you haven't gotten to? That might be a stupid question that you've gotten a million times. But... No, it, you know that's not a stupid question at all. I don't even know if we know everything that's out there. I'll tell you the movie that I've just been fascinated by that we uh, we did. It was uh, called Miami Connection. And the premise of this movie, it's uh, it's about uh, ninjas, a rock band, and the drug trade in not Miami, but Orlando. Even though the movie is called uh, Miami Connection, it takes place in Orlando. What basically happened was there is a, a guy who owned a dojo in Orlando, and <laughs> he raised money for this movie, made this movie, and it was never released. And they were doing one of those uh, things where they clear out storage lockers, you know, like uh, you like a used store place. And Alamo Drafthouse bid on this reel of film. They're like, oh, we don't know what this is. We'll, we'll bid on this reel of film. And they discovered this movie, Miami Connection, that was just sitting there for 20 some odd years. They restored it and they just put it out a couple of years yeah. ago. And it is about a rock band who are ninjas. And it, there hey, are so called? many- What's Miami it? Connection. Miami Connection. I, I like. I know there are bad movies, and I like one of the things about how did this get made that we really try to do is make the movies fun for you to watch. And this one, I can guarantee, is one of the most fun things you have. Uh, so many details. I don't even want to spoil it, but I will say that yes, while there is fighting and stuff like that, action. There's a lot of emotional heart uh, in it. Like there's a uh, the uh, one of the characters finds his long lost father. There is you know, and, and interspersed with like. Full on 
jams. Like I mean, the like the 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 tracks are pretty good in the song. They oh they have good. God. Yeah, the uh, the the band is great. I think their band is called like Dragon Sound. Okay. Uh, and it's it's I, I've I've I definitely to been known it. to listen to it. <laughs> um, wait, has anyone approached you about something you've said on the podcast about one of their movies or something you know, like to correct you or to? I got to tell you, we you know yes and no corrections. Yes. So when we did uh, Morbius. I had an anonymous letter sent to me by uh, someone who worked on set and they gave me a lot of details about Jared Leto. One of them being that, you know, his character was paralyzed. And so um, he would request that someone take him to the bathroom uh, and every, every time he had to go to the bathroom. Um, And so that was interesting. Like he couldn't walk by himself. He requested wheelchairs until he became Morbius who could walk. Um, (laughs) And details like that. Um, so we get those every now and then, you know, someone will be like, oh my gosh, my uncle actually did the ADR for this movie. And I'll tell you what I know about this. So we get some of those. Um, but more often than not, we um, people will be like, I was in that movie and you were right. Like, you know, like, look, I, I've been in movies that I'm not proud of when I was shooting them. I didn't know they were going to be bad. Every, no one knows it's going to be bad. You just go like, oh, maybe we'll see. And Wow. Uh, I mean, sometimes those really bad ones too are the ones that like live on forever because the middle of the road ones are the ones that just will get lost to time. But like the really bad stuff is actually in the long run fun. I will. That's, that's the truth. It's like, there are like the ones that you want to rewatch because they are actually enjoyable. They worked on some level. I mean, I did this movie called uh, the hottie and the naughty, which I don't know if you remember. Paris Paris Hilton's. Yes. And so, um, (laughs) <laughs> and it was funny because June was telling me that uh, as we were talking about the movie, she had this moment where she totally had a, like, a, like you could see all the synapses firing. She was like, oh my God, I auditioned for the naughty. Because she remember getting a, like the hottie and the naughty and her character was the naughty. And um, June and I were actually shooting this show together and the director came up to me and she was like, I'm the naughty. <gasps> and I was like, oh, you know, and uh, it was like, you know, and then you never know, because I'm always kind of playing it like, and, and you, I kind of wait for like, and then sometimes you'll have these conversations where people are like, I'm the naughty. And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And you're waiting for them to go, it wasn't it crazy. It, it ruined my life or. Right. Or yeah. And then, or, but uh, sometimes you'll get the response like this. Yeah. It was great. You guys had a lot of fun with that one. And then you feel like, oh, no, like, like you think the hottie and the naughty is good. That was not what happened with the naughty. The naughty got it. Uh, But it was like, you never know. You're in that weird zone. Um, But we try very hard. We're never making fun of uh, the actors as much as we make fun of the characters, which I think is a distinction, which is like what we just talked about with Sinbad. It's like, yes, we're wondering about Sinbad's kid in Jingle All Way, not about Sinbad and what Sinbad's up to. Right. It's like, and I think that that makes it a little bit more fun. Cause it's like, look, you know, I, We're if people want to make fun of me. just trying to make people laugh. Yeah. I, trying like, to have a silly time. I can do it. Cause uh, I did something called Meow TV, which is television for cats by cats paid for by <laughs> Purina that aired on Lifetime. Well, I'm going to go through some of your credits in a second, but um, okay. is there an episode of the podcast that you would recommend people listen to if they haven't listened to it before? You know, I always think that the best way into our podcast is finding a movie that you know. Like you said, like Jingle All the Way, that's going to work for you. Like whatever you see, like we just did uh, a a month of Fifty Shades of Grey. We broke down all the Fifty Shades of Grey movies, and that was amazing. The only thing I would say about that is listen in order because it does build. There's (laughs) there's a building of it because we did it uh, over the course of three nights. But yeah, just find the one that you like, and um, and I think jump in there because I think that's the best way to kind of get the flavor because you'll be like you're part of the conversation. I have a fantasy of you guys covering the Alf Christmas special. I don't know if you ever saw it, but oh, it is a fantasy of mine. I, it's crazy. First of all, we should have you on for that. And second of all, uh, I love the Alf. I mean, I, I remember watching the Alf Christmas special when I was yeah. a kid. There's like a suicide attempt. There's like a dying children. And it's all like wrapped up in this puppet Alf thing. It's like crazy. I, isn't it's it crazy. so crazy? Like what we watched, I mean, you're younger than me, but what we watch as kids, like I was, I put on Adventures in Babysitting for my kids the other day. Um, and I was like, they're going to like this. This is funny. This is good. And then I'm watching this movie, which is for all intents and purposes, a kid's movie. Um, you know, not kid, kid, but like, you know, and the main through line of this movie is like Elizabeth Shue 
is looks like the looks like the uh, a Playboy cover model. And at one point, the kids accidentally steal the Playboy, and the bad guys are after the Playboy. The Playboy is such a major part of this movie that I'm like. How how did anyone go like yeah 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 we'll make it a Playboy like we we won't make it a glamour we won't make we'll make it a Playboy and everyone's always sneaking looks at the centerfold you never see the centerfold and uh, there's so much insane stuff in there and this movie you know they, you have all these adventures they're going through Chicago and Anthony Rapp is in it and he's amazing and there's this moment where they pick up Elizabeth Elizabeth Shoe's friend who's trying to run away from home she gets trapped at a a bus station and they get her in the car. And the movie's about to be over. They've saved the day. They're racing home. And they just cut to the back seat. And Elizabeth Shue's friend is passed out in the back and she's wearing a jacket. And Anthony Rapp just like picks up her jacket to like check out her boob. And I was like, why, why? Why do we need to do this then? Like, like this is not for, my kids are like, what is he doing? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I think he was trying to keep her warm, maybe warm her up. Like, this is like, there are some choices that we made in the 80s that were, bizarre i mean goonies opens with a suicide and with ever and with so many people like looking at it to prove it essentially and it was like for no one to raise yeah, an to be- eyebrow at something like that but movies were just weirder back then now i i yeah this true maybe a broader conversation but it does feel like now everything because it's sort of made by committee you get a lot of those those um imperfections are are always cleaned out of these things and so yeah, sometimes yeah. it makes these movies less fun too. And that's why I think nah. that we then and to bring it all the way back, that's why I think we love reality TV because it's it is Messier. like we we messy. We yeah. want it messy. Like we have the like ET. ET dies. Kids are crying. It's great. Like we'd never kill ET now. If ET was in the movie, ET would be alive. There they you know and then you know and then they bring him back. You know, it's like but yeah, we want that like I think we like sloppy stuff and when we don't and because it has to go through so many different people um it gets filtered out, but at least reality TV, it doesn't, it does not get filtered out, but it is like, that is the reason why I can, I can watch all these, these stories and, and just try to put it all like, to me, like summer house to, to me is like, just cause I've just watched like, a, I just was catching up all this weekend on that. Uh, so in that zone right now, um, it's like, they're your friends. They're your friends that you talk about behind their back. And that's essentially what we're doing. That's what I love about uh, talking to you. But I also love about like, watch what happens live. It's like, we can just talk shit on our friends. Right. No, it's the best. Speaking of talking shit, I quickly have to ask you about best week ever. Do you have any yes. good best week ever stories? Well, I, you know, there's I, a- gr- I was raised on best week ever. Like okay. uh, so many of us were. And I feel like that's why a lot of us have an appreciation for older pop culture that maybe I wasn't around when I was growing up. But we learned in Best Week Ever. Well, Best Week Ever to me was the best thing because it's a show on VH1 that every week they would kind of highlight the craziest in reality TV, game shows, whatever, like even Passions. Passions, great soap opera. Oh, it's so good. Uh, vampires and stuff. But the um, but what was kind of great about that show uh, was it was before Twitter. So there was no... Um, that was a way to kind of catch up on the week. It was your week's cliff notes of everything that happened. It kind of like Talk Soup, but different because Talk Soup was one person and this was like a whole bunch of different comedians, so a whole bunch of different voices. Now, it was a VH1 show and uh, just to make sure everyone knows, uh, VH1, notoriously cheap. We shot that in an office building, in an office that they would pull down um, like a large colored people, uh, colored uh, construction paper behind us. Like that was it. We sat in a chair and we would talk. Occasionally, we would have interactions with celebrities. And one of my favorite interactions this is actually in the book. The night that I'm going on my first date with June, China, the wrestler, uh, was uh, also, I think she was on This Real Life too, uh, was on the show. And it was supposed to be this thing where she wanted to show a clip for The Surreal Life. And I was the clip blocker, which meant I tried to block people from sh- showing clips. And she was just supposed to like, kind of just pretend hit me. But as we shot this bit, she full on tackled me. Like the full weight of China, like took me down. I hit my head on the back of a table because we're in a small office, you know, and a boom, I'm like, oh. And, and and I'm also like, I gotta get to this date with June. I can't have a concussion. And, and- 
<laughs> and it was like, that was to me, one of the craziest moments being tackled by a professional wrestler on TV, trying to wave off a slight concussion. But I do believe that that uh, blunt force trauma to the head made me uh, approach my date with June in a much uh, lighter way. I, 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 maybe it was a, like, I was a little bit more go with the fuck. So, so best week ever was responsible for your family is really, it really is what it comes down to. without that, without that, I, mean, I should say China. Um, China. but, but yeah, it was kind of the best thing. Like being on that show at that time, everyone watched it and I just love pop. I've loved pop culture. I do love pop culture. Um, and I, I, know, I miss all back. of those shows. I miss the, I love Ooh. the eighties The I love, you know, those shows best week ever. I just, I don't know. The I feel like there's a spot Bravo for Bravo isn't doing that on their network. Bravo execs, listen up. Because it would be great. Like, sometimes we just want to catch up and we don't have time. Like, I would love to be able to watch all those shows. But then I get in that zone where I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't watched. And this is why I watched all these summer houses. I'm like, I was traveling. So I was like, the great time. But I'm like, oh, I haven't watched five. Oh no. And then it's like, then it becomes like six hours of TV and I get overwhelmed. So it's like, you need, you need a little bit of just like, just tell me what's on. Give me a little taste. I'll go and find it. I'll get back to it. And on Bravo, there's so many quirky moments that I might not be watching a show, but if I see a little quirky moment from it on a show like that, it might make me want to tune into that show. Like, wait, who are these 100%. people over here on this show that I'm not familiar with? That's so, what I feel yeah, like. It doesn't make any sense. It's like you need a sampler platter to decide when you're gonna, you know, take a take a little sip of something. But it's like, I I uh, I love those shows too, and I just I do miss it. And you know, I've talked about like that in the past. Like, how do we get that back? Because I think that you know, what you're doing, uh, obviously, and what we do on, like, on how did this get made? Like, we all are celebrating pop culture in different ways. It's like just in podcast form, but it's like, I'd like to see some clips too. Yeah, Show yeah, some clips. totally. Uh, okay, Paul, before I say goodbye, tell everyone about your book now. Oh, what yes. What else can they, what other stories can they expect um, from this? So the book is, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this show, How Did This Get Made, for 14 years. And over that time, I've told these stories about my childhood that I thought was incredibly normal. But whenever I would tell these stories, I'd look over at Jason and June and I'd see the shock look on their face, which made me realize, oh, maybe everyone doesn't have a grandma who told them not to open the door because there was a rogue butcher in town who was known for kidnapping children and making them into chop meat, uh, which is true. It's not in the book. Uh, my grandmother did tell me that story. She's like, oh yeah, and you know how they, they caught him? I was like, no, how? And she's like, well, this woman was making chop meat, making burgers. And as she made the burger, she saw these eyes in the chop meat. And the, and the burger said, mommy, mommy. And it's, that image scared the hell out of me. I still didn't know I was locking the door because it seemed like the butcher was caught. But, uh, but yeah, like, so like, it started out of that. Like these stories that this world that I lived in as a kid and what I assumed was normal, um, and it, it it kind of that's like the jumping off point. Like you mentioned, story about me uh, almost burning down uh, a, a club med for families, uh, okay. and and kind of just goes into all these different areas about like what it is to be a good partner, what it is to to be a good parent, or to parent well, and kind of coming to terms with you know your parents who, depending on your relationship with them, I think there's moments in your life where you look back at them and you see things in a different way. Like when you're a kid, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. You assume that they do and kind of reconciling with like how to, you know, how to be with these parents as you get smarter, older, and a more emotionally intelligent. And by the way, it's all right. super funny, but I think it's like the through line is kind of like that idea, like kind of wrestling with uh, your childhood as you get older. Yeah. I don't know if you felt this way, but I, I think um, I learned in writing mine is sometimes something might have seemed like a little moment, like a trip to, I don't know, the dry cleaners or whatever, yes. a little thing. And then when you're looking back on it and, and writing, even in a comedic way, you look back and then you realize actually it was part of this bigger puzzle or, or it, it actually had more deeper meaning than maybe you realized at the time. I, I totally think that that's why these moments are locked in. And, and I would often start writing from that moment, like in the dry cleaner, like, you know, and then and then you look at it and then something like clicks to you. Like, I don't want to over intellectualize it, but it feels to me like you have a big piece of marble and you're like, oh, well, all right, let's see what this is. And it kind of continually shows its face to you. Like, you know, it's like, oh, that's what it is. Like I started the dry cleaner and then I realized, oh wait, that's weird. And then you kind of go backwards. Like oftentimes when I wrote these pieces, the end of the story uh, or the beginning of the story often is the end of the story. And I kind of go back out. So I, I loved I just love writing. I, I mean, you know, you, you know, you were uh, an inspiration in it too, because I feel like oh. 
there are these you have a great voice you're so funny um and you're yeah, just like honor, I, I want to sit down with you and i want to like talk you know, like, like you guys want to talk about you know real housewives i want to talk about you know get Thanks, into it all bro. like you know we didn't you know kimberly Debro or whatever like uh, like yeah. uh, you know but it's like uh but yeah, and and I think that that's what I wanted the book to feel like, a conversation. And I have a, I have the audio book, which I read, and I added a bunch of different little things in there as well. But it's to me, it's like a, a chance to kind of continue a conversation and and kind of take a moment because I guess in life, we have conversations and we're listening to people, we're reacting to people. And very rarely do we get to lead a conversation unless we're like on stage by ourselves. And very rarely are we doing that. So it gives me a chance to tell the stories the way I want to tell them from beginning to end without getting sidetracked or interrupted or or maybe even pulling back from some details that are a little darker because I'm reading somebody getting frozen on the other side. Like I'm like, oh, I don't want to make, I don't want to bum you out. Let's get, get away from the bum out and go over here, you know? And like, and so, yeah, I, I think it's, it's to me, I, I like the process of writing like that. Well, hey, I got to be asking you two questions. Yeah, please. Yeah. Did you read Paris Hilton's book? No, I have Paris Hilton's book, but I haven't read it. It's great. Is it uh, I, I, it's very, very good, okay. especially the center part of it, where she talks about being sent away to this school. If you only take away one thing, read that. Read that. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a very good one. I just read someone's memoir and now I'm totally blanking on who it was. Minka Kelly. Uh, no, hers was good though. I liked yeah, hers. I liked yeah. hers too. Um, to me more, did you read hers? That wasn't Ooh. recent, but hers was like one of my favorite ever. I, I, and Martin I'm Short. A, Oh, Martin Short's great. I love re- I love memoirs. They are like that to me. Like that was my only way into connecting to people. Like you know, and I still like it. I still like. I mean, I'm 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 all in. The uh, Penny Marshall one is the one I just read, and it's so fucking batshit because she'll just like drop a bomb in the middle of a sentence about like Laverne and Shirley. So she'll be like, and then I fucked our Carfunkel, and you're like, what? Uh, <laughs> like, what but that like say? that's like that's like Barbara Streisand's too. Like Barbara yeah, Streisand's yeah. audiobook. Like it's this tangent. She's like, you know, I like. I like brownies, but you know, they don't make them with walnuts anymore because everyone's got these allergies. And I carry walnuts with me and I and I'll shove a walnut in that brand. I'm like, God bless. More. I need more of Barbara. Give it to me all. Uh yeah, I'm I'm all in. Well, Paul, I'm so excited to read more of your book. I really I appreciate did. That you even I, took I, I the thought... time to to read any of it. And I, I like I said, this has been a true uh I they asked me what shows I wanted to do, and you were one of the first ones. So oh, uh you, I really thank truly you. I'm so excited. Thank you so well, what's much. What's your favorite Mariah Carey song? I ask all of my guests that. Well, I mean, can we can we say it? Like that, it can't be all I want for Christmas because it's like I mean that's that is my favorite. I mean, there's there is no there's sure. no better, I you know in my mind. I mean, do you? Do, if you I mean, I know you probably don't like. No, I think I, it's a flawless song. A flawless I mean, it song. is. I think I yeah. could go watch her do a concert and just do that four times in a row, which I think she might have done. Which she Hollywood. probably does. Yeah. I, I I mean, emotions is great because I had that album when I was a kid. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna say like emotions. Emotions is like, again, the whistle note at the end. Yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah. Emotional baby. I love, I mean, I mean, she's great. I just saw Madonna in concert. (gasps) Uh, And that was a trip because she sounded like 1980s Madonna in certain parts of the show. And apparently that's her real voice. Like she wasn't, I mean, I think that they're tweaking some levels. What's your favorite Madonna song? Oh, well, that's hard. I, you know, I honestly, I will tell you this much. Going to see Madonna, I was like, oh my God, like the amount of- The catalog. The catalog is unbelievable. And I think like, like there's like different, like uh, like I like, you know, I'm not saying that this is my favorite, but like I can enjoy Ray of Light just as much as I can enjoy like the uh, like the, the first songs of Madonna. You know, it's like, um, I guess- Hmm. All right. This is. I'm sorry. I'm like. like um, no. I love I mean, a Madonna ballad. I'm like a Madonna ballad person. Ooh, which I, like I feel that. like those go underrated sometimes with Madonna because I, of course would you, people like the dance stuff. Well, I mean, I like La Isa Bonita. Is that like a? Yeah, is that like a ballady? Right. Ballady. Yeah, ballady. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, what, like what's a ballad? Like what would you like? Uh, a rain is probably my favorite. Do you know that oh, song? It's like sort of. That's a, great. Um, is "Live to I, Tell" I, a ballad? I'll remember is uh, is ballady. I love that one. Uh, what was it? What did you say? "Live to Tell." "Live to Tell." Um, I mean, it's it's not a dance. They're, they're the the slower. They're more the the sad yeah, songs, yeah. right? But I then, mean, yeah, nothing really matters. Is really fast, but I don't think it's, it's dance song really. Yeah, I, I mean, she gets that. more into like yeah. dance stuff. I feel like towards the end, right? Like, I feel like, or not towards the end. She's still making stuff, but it's like I guess holiday is. It depends. It's like I, but like every 
every album felt a little bit different. I mean, I like seeing like a prayer. I like, you know, she didn't do Papa Dome. No, she didn't do like a virgin, which I thought was interesting in the best of tour, or at least the one that I saw. Um, I mean, it's must be hard to just narrow that down. I know. It, it, Cause it's like, you're like, Oh, it's like, all right, I want to hear like, don't cry for me, Argentina. I want to justify my love. You know, like I'm, I'm all in. I, I, I'm a, they made me listen to Madonna for like two weeks straight after seeing that show. Um, sure, sure. But I also felt like, and this is my one critique of it is uh, I was a Chris Angel magician. You know, he kind of does this whole thing where he's like the cool David Copperfield or whatever. Um, he had decided to do the show in Las Vegas with Cirque du Soleil. When I finally got to see it, it was like he ripped out parts that were Cirque du Soleil and then kind of added his own thing. So it just felt really like lopsided. And when I saw that Madonna show, I felt like someone was like, Madonna, this is what we're going to do. It, this is concert going to be a story of your life. And we're going to go from the beginning to the end. And we're going to like segment it. And there was like, just giant jumps that were shocking to me. She's like, I started out in New York City with $3 in my pocket and I had a song. And then she, they play this song that she played at like CBGB's. Um, I'm like, oh, this is fucking cool. I'm gonna like watch her like evolution. And then she just like jumps way ahead. And I'm like, oh, and then go backwards again. And then jumps way ahead. I was like, like, I felt like she was like, no, 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 I can't. I'm not doing all this old shit together. I'm gonna mix it up. It's like, it was just like, it was a Jarring. little chaotic. Yeah, because then at the end, like the end is like this amazing clip reel of everyone saying like Madonna rules, Madonna, 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 Madonna. And then it's like, thank you. Good night. It's like, oh, you just got me so psyched for you know more. And then you're, I have to go. I don't want that. Um, yeah. But I am. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I was out there. Madonna and Taylor Swift, my favorite concerts of this year. The, I saw the Eras tour. It was so good. But there must be so much pressure now for all of these artists because Taylor Swift was like three and a half hours. And now they, yes. it's like you have to do these tours. And that's crazy too when you really think about it. I feel like they're all pressured now. Well, I feel like Madonna's tour felt to me like a reaction to Taylor Swift. I feel like Beyonce doesn't give a hell, like give and give a shit. Like she's like, I'm going to do my thing. And Beyonce's shows are yeah. unbelievable. They're awesome. But they're not like, I don't feel like they're pressurized, but I feel like Madonna was like, Beyonce and Taylor Swift put a pressure on her. And, like, and watch I think my she fucking wants, show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think she wants to be like, I'm still here. I'm still relevant. And it's crazy. It's like, she should be relevant. She's great. Like, she's yeah. amazing. But it is like, oh, it's hard. It's hard to be that. Yeah. Like, and when you've been around for so long, you have so many songs. And then to feel pressure to have to perform a, a kind of all of them or stuff from each uh each album aged, it's a lot. and you've and you've aged your voice age. i mean i've saw I, i've seen you know it's like it's you just can't hit those notes all the time and it's, you know even doing thing. like live podcast shows even not even st- like i have to stand up or sketch yeah. or whatever but even like a live podcast recording it's like even by the end of that after an hour i'm like whoo <laughs> i know we used to I'm do two drained. shows that had to, we used to do two shows that had this get made and we haven't done it since the pandemic and i'm like what were we thinking? Like so one much. show is I mean, enough. It's draining. Cause, yeah. Cause you're giving out so much and it's like, I can't even imagine if I'm dancing. I mean, that's why like when I saw Beyonce, I was like, I'm done. Like there's no, like right. Taylor Swift show was amazing and spectacle and awesome. But what Beyonce was up to, like just as a performer, like not singer, I'm just like dancing, moving. I was like, I don't even under, I don't even understand. I don't know. You just trying to get that it's energy up every human. night yeah. to do that. Yeah. So that's why they're them, I guess. I know. Um, Paul, thank you so much. A joyful recollections of trauma, May 21st. Everyone's going to get it. We're all going to read it. Uh, and I can't wait to finish it. I'm very excited. So thank well, you so you're much, lovely. Paul. Thank I, you so much. I hope we get to see you soon in real life. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see you in person. But I'm such a huge fan of your work. So thank you for taking the time. And I am you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul.